The Roosevelt Island Tramway is an aerial tramway in New York City that spans the East River and connects Roosevelt Island to the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Prior to the completion of the Mississippi Aerial River Transit in May 1984 and the Portland Aerial Tram in December 2006, it was the only commuter aerial tramway in North America. Over 26 million passengers have used the tram since it began operation in 1976. Each cabin is a capacity of up to 110 people and makes approximately 115 trips per day. The tram moves at about 17.9 miles per hour and travels 3,100 feet in three minutes. At its peak it climbs to 250 feet above the East River as it follows its route on the north side of the Ed koch Queensboro Bridge, providing views of the east side of Midtown Manhattan. Two cabins make the run at 15-minute intervals from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. and continuously during rush hours. It is one of the few forms of mass transit in New York City not run by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, but uses that system's MetroCard and has free transfers to that system. The tram is operated by LPOA on behalf of the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation of the State of New York a state public benefit corporation created in 1984 to run services on the island. History equals Early history equals Roosevelt Island had been connected to Manhattan by a trolley line that crossed over the Queensboro Bridge from its opening in 1909. Trolleys to and from Queens stopped in the middle of the bridge to meet an elevator, which then took passengers down to the island. As the only connection to the rest of the city from the island, the trolley remained in service until April 7, 1957, long after most other trolley service had been dismantled in the city, and was the last trolley line in New York State. It was replaced by buses. At that time, a bridge to Queens was completed, requiring a roundabout trip to reach Manhattan. Beginning in the mid-1970s, Roosevelt Island was redeveloped to accommodate low- to mid-income housing projects necessitating the construction of a new public transit connection to the city. The trolley tracks had deteriorated beyond repair and the Roosevelt Island subway station serving the island via the 63rd Street subway connection had not yet been completed. In 1971, the Urban Development Corporation retained Lev Sitlin Associates to select and design a transit connection to Roosevelt Island. James A. Ocon P.E. led the LZA team in carrying out a feasibility study and design. Three alternate modes were studied, a ferry, an elevator from the bridge, and the aerial tramway. The tramway was selected and the system was designed for bidding. Von Roll was selected to supply and direct the tram and its equipment. It was opened in July 1976 as a temporary solution for the island's commuting needs. As the subway project fell further behind schedule, the tram became more popular and was converted into a permanent facility, and the tram held a monopoly for service between Roosevelt Island and the rest of Manhattan until the subway connection to the island was finally completed in October 1989. The tram was the last holdout for the use of tokens in the New York City transit system. Initially, it used a special token, which was later replaced by the standard variety for subways and buses. Although tokens were phased out in favor of the Metro card by 2003, the tram did not start to accept Metro cards until March 1, 2004. The fare is the same as that on the buses and subways, US $2.75 for a one-way trip, with free transfers to the subway and buses. During the 2005 New York City transit strike, the tramway was one of the few intra-city public transportation systems still in operation, due to the fact that it is privately operated. Equals breakdowns equals. On April 18, 2006, at about 5.22 p.m. EDT, the two trams were stuck over the East River for seven hours because of mechanical problems, trapping 69 people. Rescue baskets capable of holding up to 15 people were sent up to the stranded cable cars at 10.55 p.m., with children and elderly going first, and each rescue taking about 20 minutes. These baskets also carried supplies to the trams, such as blankets, baby formula, and food, for the remaining passengers. Passengers on the Roosevelt Islander Eurobound tram were rescued by about 2.55 a.m. on April 19.
while those on the Manhattan-bound tram were not rescued until 4.07 a.m. The April 2006 incident had been the second time in eight months that the tram system lost power. On September 2, 2005, more than 80 people were trapped on the tram for over 90 minutes. After that incident, state inspectors cited the Roosevelt Island Tramway for not having an operational diesel backup, or motor generator system. The State Department of Labor said the system did not pass electrical inspection and could not run when the April 18 power outage took place. The tramway suspended operations after the April 2006 incident, reopening on September 1, 2006. The tram's backup electrical systems were refurbished, and in case of an emergency, each car now is equipped with blankets, water, food, and a toilet with a privacy curtain. Car attendants will carry cell phones with their radios. Equals renovation equals. On March 1, 2010, the tramway was closed as part of a $25 million project to upgrade and modernize the system. With the help of the French company Poma, all components were replaced except for the three tower bases. Among the improvements, the new tram cables and cars are now allowed to operate independently of each other in a dual haul system. Prior to this, the cars had to travel at the same time, which presented maintenance and emergency response issues. The old cabins may be preserved on Roosevelt Island and or a museum. The tramway reopened November 30, 2010, at 11 a.m. The project was completed in nine months, two months longer than originally planned. Accessibility and transfers The tram is wheelchair accessible. Bicycles are permitted on the tram. In Manhattan, the entrance to the system is at Tram Plaza at 60th Street and 2nd Avenue. The closest New York City subway station is the complex at Lexington Avenue slash 59th Street on the IND Queens Boulevard line and Lexington Avenue a Euro 63rd Street on the IND BMT 63rd Street lines are also nearby. On Roosevelt Island, the Red Bus route meets the tram and offers transportation around the island for free. During the tramway reconstruction, the Red Bus was extended to Queens Plaza and the Manhattan side of the Queensboro Bridge. The publicly operated Q102 bus also provides transportation on the island. The Roosevelt Island subway station is located north of the tramway entrance. In popular culture, film, Gerard Damiano's film Odyssey. The ultimate trip may have been the first film to feature the tramway, which carries one of the lead female characters into Manhattan for a modeling interview. The house on the edge of the park shows the tram at 6.07 minutes into the film as how it appeared in the late 1970s. The Sylvester Stallone thriller Nighthawks depicted the tramway as a terrorist target where United Nations delegates were taken hostage. In Brian De Palma's Scarface the tramway can be seen in the background as Tony makes a phone call following the aborted assassination attempt in New York City. It was used in the opening credits of City Slickers. In the 1994 film La Copyright On, The Professional it can be seen when Natalie Portman's character, Matilda, is traveling on it alone. The Roosevelt Island tramway was featured prominently in a climactic battle in the 2002 film Spider-Man in which the Green Goblin throws Mary Jane Watson off the Queensboro Bridge, and Spider-Man must choose between saving her or passengers on the tramway. Shooting of this movie caused the tram to be out of service for weeks. It also appeared in the 2005 horror movie Dark Water. The bridge and tram are also featured at the end of the 2013 film Now You See Me. TV, in an episode of the series CSI New York. It was erroneously referred to as the nation's only operating tramway. The projected fate of the tramway was shown in episode 4 of the first season of Life After People, the series. The tram was featured in a 2012 episode of White Collar, with Neil Caffrey leaping from a Manhattan-bound tram to one going back to Roosevelt Island. In an episode of the series Impractical Jokers titled Captain Fatley, Joe's punishment for losing is standing on top of one of the tramway cars dressed as a superhero and completing tasks while dealing with the constantly rocking car. Other, the tram was featured prominently in the Universal Studios Florida theme park attraction Confrontation, which opened in 1990 and closed in 2002. 
The ride consisted of passengers boarding a recreation of a Roosevelt Island tram where they promptly came face to face with King Kong. The recreation did take certain liberties with regard to accuracy as the real trams, for example, do not have seats. The real tram also runs in a straight line, while the ride trams navigated curves. A virtual version of the tramway is seen in fictional Liberty City of the Grand Theft Auto gaming series. In Grand Theft Auto 4 the player can ride the cable car between the fictional Colony Island and Lancet. See also, lists of crossings of the East River, transportation in New York City. Footnotes. References. External links. Official website, Roosevelt Island Tram Modernization Project. ROC. Manhattan Entrance on Google Maps Street View, Roosevelt Island Entrance on Google Maps Street View, Pictorials, Roosevelt Island Tram Nixaway.org. Byrne, Laron. TPH 110 v Roosevelt Island Tramway. Ramontes Mechaniques. Technical data and pictures about the new ropeway, soaring high above New York City on an aerial tramway. Greg Goodman. July 29, 2011. Photo essay, photographer as Dell Telecopyright for Eco de Roosevelt Island, pictures of the Roosevelt Island Tramway. Guia Turistica de Nueva York. Tram. Cogetto. Panoramic video of tram ride.